وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala I'm going to start a series on the rulings and the manners and the etiquettes of Ramadan what you and I all need to be doing in Ramadan the ahkam that we need to be following the jurisprudent rulings what are the things that we are not allowed to do what are the things that nullify our fasting and manners that are in fasting those are the things that I'm going to be idhni lail kareem be discussing and tackling in this series inshallah ta'ala my series inshallah ta'ala is going to be uh, uh, eight episodes with the introduction which will make it nine so today inshallah ta'ala i'm going to be doing the introduction and then after that it will be nine sorry eight episodes it will be eight episodes after that inshallah inshallah ta'ala I want to encourage you, all of you who are watching Bi'idhnillahi al-Kareem to take notes and write down the things that are going to be mentioned. Because Bi'idhnillahi al-Kareem, this series is going to be very basic, simple and easy. The plan Bi'idhnillahi al-Kareem, it is to give you the most essential things that you need to know about fasting. And it is also to be given to you in a very short and summarized episode. The episode, inshallah ta'ala, shouldn't go beyond uh, 30 minutes. That is the plan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength and the ability to execute it. In today's episode, I'm going to be speaking about, or I'm going to be doing the introduction. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing the introduction. And there are three things I want to speak about uh, in today's uh, introduction. Three points. The first thing I want to speak about is what is fasting? Ma ma'ana sawmu? What is ama ma huwa sawmu? What is fasting? Fasting has a meaning in the Arabic language prior to Islam coming, and the meaning that the Quran and the Sunnah and the religion of Islam gave it. Those are the two definitions I'm going to give. The definition that it has and had in the Arabic language prior to Islam and also the uh, meaning that it has within the religion. The meaning of the word as in the Arabic language is al-imsaku. Al-imsaku. And al-imsaku means to restrain. It is to withhold. And that is the meaning Maryama used in the Quran, the mother of Isa, when she said, Inni nadartu lirrahmani sawma. فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّا إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلْرَحْمَانِ صَوْمَا Today I have made a nether, a oath and a covenant with my Lord. إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلْرَحْمَانِ صَوْمَا To do what? To do صَوْم. What does she mean by صَوْم here? She means to withhold and to restrain myself from speaking. فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّا She said, I'm not going to speak to anyone. So the usage of the word as in that ayah is the linguistic and the lexical usage according to the Arabs and what they meant by it. The same is the usage of the pre-Islamic poet al nabighatul al-Dubiyani when he said, he said, خَيْلُ صِيَامٌ وَخَيْلُ غَيْرُ صَائِمَةٍ تَحْتَ الْعَجَاجِ وَأُخْرَى تَعْلُقُ الْلُجُمَى Some horses were galloping. While others upon their bridles restrained. So some horses were galloping, and while others were bridled, um, were upon their bridles, and they were restrained. So the last part is what concerns us. He's saying that some of the horses were restrained with the bridles that were in their mouth, the strips that were in the mouth of the horse. They were restrained with that. So the word he used here is what? 
khaylu siyamun wa khaylu ghayru sa'imatin some horses were uh, galloping and they had no restraints and others were upon their bridles restrained the usage here that nabighatu dubyani is using is the lexical linguistic usage which means to restrain mutlaq al imsak the sharia gave a meaning to the word fasting what is it al imsak it is to restrain from what an al muftirati from the things that break your fasting min tulu' al fajr ila ghurub al shams ma'a al niyyati from the sunrise to the sunset with an intention so you withhold from the muftirat the things that break your fasting and what are the things that break your fasting it's going to be one of the classes and um, one of the episodes inshallah ta'ala so it's to restrain but this restraining is not mutlaq it's not unrestricted what i mean by that is you restrain from particular things that the quran and the sunnah commanded you to restrain from whereas in the linguistic in the lexical usage it means to restrain from any and everything it can be used for okay so it is to restrain it is to withhold from the things that break your fasting from sun rise to sunset ma'aniya with an intention with an intention al shaykh al allama muhammad ibn salih al uthaymin he says that in the definition of the sharia it's it's necessary that the word at ta'abbud is added onto it at ta'abbud is added onto it so that is also important that we we we, we recognize that that you, instead of just saying al imsak an al muftirat it is better to say at ta'abbud lillah it is to worship allah by with uh, to worship allah by restraining from the things that break your fasting so it doesn't just become a person who's not wanting to eat who is restraining from uh, food and drinking and sexual intercourse and etc but he's not worshiping allah with it that's not considered fasting okay the second point that i want to discuss today inshallah ta'ala is mata furid as-sawm when was fasting made obligatory we know that fasting is obligatory through the quran and the sunnah and the ijma consensus the quran allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم those two verses are evidence to show that the fasting is obligatory the first ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says يا ايها الذين امنوا those of you who believe كتب عليكم الصيام fasting has been made obligatory unto you as it was made obligatory on those who came before you the second ayah that i mentioned is فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ Anyone who witnesses the month and who sees the month of Ramadan فَلْيَصُمْهُ He should fast and this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the principle in the science of usul al-fiqh is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger command you to do something it shows obligation الْأَمْرُ يَقْتَضِ الْوُجُوبِ That the amr and the command it benefits and it shows obligation so Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is saying فَلْيَصُمْ shows obligation. In the sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he obliged and made it mandatory on the people to fast. He said, بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَىٰ خَمْسِمْ Islam is built upon five pillars. And from them is وَصَوْمُ رَمَضَانِ Fasting the month of Ramadan. Fasting the month of Ramadan. This is found in hadith uh, Umar radiallahu anhu sahih muslim. Okay, Hadith Jibreel and also Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar in Sahih Hain. So the fasting is obligatory also in the Sunnah. Also the Ijma, many scholars have transmitted that Ijma, like uh, Al Imam Al Nawawi rahimahullah, also Ibn Qudama rahimahullah, also Ibn Al Mundir rahimahullah, Ibn Al Rushd uh, brought the consensus, uh, Ibn Hazm and many many other scholars have also brought the consensus that fasting of Ramadan is obligatory and it's not recommended, it's obligatory. Everyone must fast and we'll speak about the people who are an exception from this. 
But generally speaking, the fasting of the month of Ramadan is obligatory. And anyone who rejects its obligation says that fasting of Ramadan is not obligatory. It's recommended. You don't have to fast. It's your choice. Is a disbeliever and is no longer a Muslim. Anyone who rejects the obligation of the month of Ramadan is a disbeliever. He leaves the fold of Islam. He is no longer considered to be a Muslim. He is considered to be from the disbelievers. So when was fasting made obligatory? The fasting was made obligatory في شعبان من سنة الثانية للهجرات. It was made obligatory in the month of Shaaban, which is the month that we're in right now. It was made obligatory in this month of Shaaban when the year was the second year of the Hijriah. After two years, when the Prophet migrated from Mecca and he migrated to Medina, two years later, Ramadan was made obligatory. So Ramadan was made obligatory, was prescribed upon the believers. من السنة الثانية للهجرة The second year in the month of Sha'ban Now I move on to the third point that I want to speak about in today's introduction inshallah ta'ala which is بما يثبت دخول شهر رمضان What makes Ramadan enter? And how does Ramadan enter? And what can establish Ramadan for us? When can we say Ramadan has entered? This is the month of Ramadan. When can we say that? يثبت الدخول شهر رمضان The month of Ramadan is established, has entered when three th- signs, I mean three ways, any one of these three ways, any one of them is an evidence that Ramadan has entered. I repeat, Ramadan enters in one of these three forms, in one of these three ways. The first, inshallah ta'ala, is رُؤْيَةُ هِلَالِ Ramadan, The sighting of the moon of Ramadan. The crescent of Ramadan is sighted. It's seen. That's one. Number two. إِكْمَالُ عِدَّةِ شَعْبَانَ ثَلَاثِينَ يوما. The month of Sha'ban finishes or is completed to 30. يعني 30 days of Sha'ban is done. Then Ramadan has definitely entered. These two, number one and number two, the first one was what? Ru'ya to Hilali Ramadan, the sighting of the moon of Ramadan. When is it necessary for the sighting of the moon of Ramadan? It is when the month for Sha'ban is 29. If you look at the, um, the Islamic calendar, and the way we look at the days and night, Islam counts from the moon. Okay? We are a lunar calendar, we do. We do it the lunar, whereas the non Muslims, they do the solar. Islam, because it follows the moon, the moon, it only stays for 29 or 20, uh, 29 or 30 each month. It doesn't become 28 and it doesn't become uh, 31. It's either 29 or 30. So the month can finish in 29. It can. That's when if this moon is sighted and Sha'ban is 29 and the moon is sighted the next day, we don't wait for 30, we fast the next day. And that month finished at 29. What about if there is a, uh, something covering? We can't sight it. We weren't able to see it. We tried to look and we couldn't see this. We couldn't sight the moon. What do we do? We let Sha'ban finish on 30. Because Sha'ban is certainty that, was, that it was in. For us to remove Sha'ban and say Sha'ban has come to an end, we need evidence for it. We need to sight the moon of Ramadan. We didn't. It was maybe cloudy, we couldn't sight it, then we allow Sha'ban to finish on 30. And that is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Ibn Umar. Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, الشهر تسع وعشرون ليلة. That the month is 29 nights. فلا تصوموه, do not fast it, حتى تروه until you see it, the crescent in the moon. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ What about if it's hidden from you and it becomes clouded and you're unable to see it? 
فَأَكْمِلُ عِدَّةَ شَعْبَانَ تَلَاتِيلَ Then finish the month of Sha'ban to 30. It's just what I mentioned. Imam Bukhari narrated in his Sahih. The month is 29. We should finish at 29. But we tried to cite it. We tried to look. We tried, we tried. We couldn't see anything. Then we let Sha'ban finish on 30. Because Sha'ban was a certainty that he entered. And it's a certainty that it was in. We couldn't remove that certainty. Or we can't remove that certainty with doubt and speculation. That is important. The third way in which Ramadan can enter is شَهَادَةُ رَجُلٍ وَاحِدٍ عَدْلٍ مُكَلَّفٍ عَلَىٰ رُؤْيَتِهِ A man, I'm a one man, who is just, who has reached age of puberty, and is sane, says that I cited it. So شَهَادَةُ رَجُلٍ It is the testimony of a man. This man can be one. He has to be a just man. And he can't be a person who is known to lie and, and like that. He's mukallaf. He's reached age of puberty and he has, he's, he's, he's sane. He's not insane. He said, I saw it. We will take it from him. And this is based on the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Anna arabiyan jaa badawin man came to the Prophet. Faqala, he said, inni ra'aytul hilala. I saw the hilal. I saw the hilal. I saw the crescent. The Bedouin man is saying it. فقال, the Prophet said to him, أَتَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Do you bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قال, نعم. The man said, yes, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. قال, أَتَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ Do you bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قال, نعم. The Bedouin man said, I do. Then the Prophet said, فَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ يَا بِلَالْ أَنْ يَصُومُ غَدَا Go, notify, tell Bilal to notify the people to fast tomorrow. Rawahu Ashabu Sunan. The Ashabu Sunan narrated it. So this Bedouin man, he saw it. The Prophet asked him a question, which was that, is he a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? And do you, do you bear witness that Allah is the only one who is worthy of worship? He said, yes. He said, do you bear witness I am the messenger sent from Allah? He said, yes. He then said, okay, go and tell Bilal. Go and tell Bilal to tell the people to fast tomorrow. And then the moon was sighted with one man who was sane and reached age of puberty and he was Adil. So these are the three points that I wanted to, inshallah ta'ala, cover in the introduction, which is number one, ma huwa sawmu, what is fasting? Mata furida sawmu, when was the fasting made obligatory? And the third one was Bima yathbutu duhulu shahri Ramadan. How does the month of Ramadan enter? Those three questions we answered in this introduction. I leave you there, inshallah ta'ala, and anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiru wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.